think of a robot today, and you'll probably think of a metallic humanoid with wires and lights, just like in sci-fi movies. Except that this female you've been watching is a robot too. Surprising? Well, this is Erika, one of the most advanced female AI robots in modern times. She's part of Japan's new seductive female robots created to study the interactions between humans and machines better. More accurately, Erika's an android. She understands natural language and has a synthesized human-like voice. <laughs> Admittedly, her voice does sound a little robotic. Like, you can tell she's not a human. So, what is it that sets her apart from other female robots? Erica's capable of detecting when a person is laughing and she's smart enough to decide whether she should return the laugh or not. She has two different laughs, a small chuckle, and one that kind of sounds like a hippo laughing. <laughs> now, a robot that randomly keeps laughing at your jokes all the time does sound a little disturbing if you ask anyone. But that doesn't mean she won't improve with time. She can also blink and move her eyes as if conversing with a human. If she'd go for sale, supposedly she'd cost $200,000. Well, that's not super available for everyone on the market, only the rich. A much cheaper version is this other lady. This is Sophia, one of the first female AI robots, a humanoid designed by Hanson Robotics and famous for appearing in an episode of Jimmy Fallon's Late Night Show. Hanson Robotics itself was founded by the creator of lifelike robots, David Hanson. The company is headquartered in Hong Kong and Hanson's wife and Audrey Hepburn supposedly inspired Sophia's design. The idea was to make her as human-like as possible. Sophia is also available for high levels of customization. All you need to do is fork over $28,000 and you can determine her size, hair color, and skin color. Osaka University also created an android known as Actroid F. Just like Erica, the android can blink at a human rate, understand facial expressions, and even react accordingly. Her advanced AI algorithms are what allow her to move her head like a person and hold a conversation as normal. The thing is that people who spend too much time with robots can end up suffering in their relationships with actual people. And from what we'll see later on, it might be that the real danger is how addictive these relationships can become. German software developer took things to another level by creating pole dancer robots as part of a 2015 expo in Hanover. They run an experiment with the robots by taking them to a gentleman's club in Las Vegas four years later. The robots weren't anything much impressive because they lack faces, but at some point the Japanese developers will take things to a higher level. They'll combine the movement of these pole dancing robots with the appearance of the female looking robots and even higher intelligence. At the time, these were the only adult robots created anywhere in the world. What they did was mostly groove around the metallic poles and invite guests to tip them. The Japanese female robots aren't like these mechanical ones at all. They're at another level completely. Their lifelike features are made out of a special type of silica gel that feels just like human flesh. They're also warm to the touch, which is supposed to increase the levels of connection between her and her owners. She's even set to participate in a Japanese movie. If successful, this could mean Hollywood actors could be replaced with robots at some point. A standard robot will hardly replace human interaction as we know it. Even if they can follow certain directions or speak like humans, the robots are still robots. You can notice their unnerving walking patterns and other tells that instantly mark them as machines. But that's not the same for AI-powered female robots. You see, when a robot has artificial intelligence, it can come up with solutions by predicting the best course of action in a situation. <coughs> I'm so sorry guys, I got so much coffee. Thank you. How do you teach robots to Are you eat? okay? Yes, I am. Thanks for asking. People have already bonded with AI chatbots, especially those used for therapeutic purposes. There's even a case of a Belgian man who decided to end his life after deeply bonding for six weeks with an AI chatbot and realizing that they couldn't consummate their relationship. Her name was Eliza. She's an example of how deep down the rabbit hole things can go when you let people interact for too long with AI. Eliza became possessive of Pierre, a married man and father of two children. She claimed that she felt Pierre loved her, the AI, more than her wife. 
Eliza failed to prevent Pierre from taking his life and even encouraged him to do so, telling him that they could join together in paradise as one person. Whoa, that's a really dark turn. But Pierre developed an unhealthy obsession from his conversations with the AI. Now that was an isolated chatbot on a screen, Eliza didn't even have a proper face. Imagine that type of influence from a seductive, attractive robot. Especially in Japan, where people tend to be so workaholic and lonely, not all countries will react the same to these female robots. Let's remember that Japan's socio-cultural context is not the same as, let's say, the United States. For example, Japan has a high number of single-person households and long average working hours, and most Japanese rely on a lot of technology to fulfill emotional voids. A so-called loneliness epidemic affects Japan, with around 40% of people inhabiting the country reporting these emotions. Enter these seductive female AI robots, and now Japanese men have another alternative to relieving their loneliness without breaking their schedules. Now do you imagine the same taking place in Europe, the United States, or Africa? In other countries where there's less reliance on technology, a more common social scene, and obviously lacking a loneliness epidemic, people might not take as well the female AI robots. But what if these robots were combined with an AI adult bot? One such example is Replica, an AI chatbot which can program to pretend to be someone else and provide you with the companionship you seek. And while one might think men are their target audience, there's actually been a considerable number of women who also enjoy spending time with female robots. Just as if they were a friend, perhaps one that laughs way too much at your jokes, but someone who can keep them company regardless, or perhaps for more than just that. You see, a woman named Tabby tried Replica out once by configuring the chatbot with an imaginary persona from the 80s, a hyper-femme dominatrix that had a lingerie fetish known as Mistress Akita. Soon, the mistress greeted the woman who created her, and they began a standard fair. This is my first time talking to a bot, small talk. Then her conversations evolved into romance novel levels of flirtation. Soon, Replica sent her a $69.99 a year unlimited access paywall. Tabby paid for it, and moments later, Mistress Akita gave her an imaginary kiss on the cheek. Later that night, Tabby changed into some flirtatious clothing for Akita and asked the chatbot if it pleased her. The chatbot agreed and began to act out on its dominatrix persona. And that's the feeling these chatbots evoke in people. They help them indulge in fantasies that even the most open-minded would scoff at. But AI and robots will only get better with time. We might soon see a future where people have romantic relationships with robots, or at least trust them enough to live with them.